Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back once again to our lectures uh, on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharane Nibhishesha Shunyavari Pastata Deshatarane All glories to Sri Prabhupada, the revealer of the Dham. So recently we mentioned that the purpose of this lecture series is to awaken our love specifically for Radha and Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. The Brihat Bhagavatam Ritam uh, 3, 5 to 18 says, Adita tad braja krita dhyanagana pada naya bhakta sampadyate prashta nama sankirtana jvalam. One develops that love by practicing devotional service, whose main ways are meditation on and singing about the many braja pastimes of the Lord. That service becomes brilliant by sankirtan of the Lord's most beloved holy names. Now, Srila uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur summarizes this entire process very nicely <coughs> with a stanza in his poem called Sada Grahi Vaishnava. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> he writes, There rests upon my soul from matter free, upon my lover's arms. Eternal peace and spirit's love are all my chanting charms. Are all my chanting charms. And uh, our beloved Srila Shanatan Goswami beautifully describes that exact moment, we're back in our lover's arms, Krishna, <laughs> upon returning back home to the eternal Vrindavan in the spiritual sky. It's one of the most beautiful passages in our entire list of Shastras. It's in Brihat Bhagavatam Ritam, uh, Volume 3, Chapter 6, beginning from uh, verse 29. So beautiful. He's actually describing the devotee Gopal Kumar's, how could I say, triumphant entrance into uh, Goloka Vrindavan after a long journey home. It's in itself a long passage, but worth hearing, if only to remind us of the nectarian goal we're trying to achieve. <clears throat> Gopal Kumar begins. In this way, I moved here and there anxiously questioning each person I met. And as I made my way forward, I came to the pasturing grounds of the cowherds. Then, looking around in all directions, I spotted in the distance a town adorned with the essence of all sweetness. Now, Srila Shanatana Goswami says in the purport to that particular verse, it's important, at the other realms Gopal Kumar had visited in the material and spiritual worlds were each great in their own way, but none of them, not even Vaikuntha, was as attractive as this. Then Gopal Kumar continues to describe his entering Goloka Vrindavan. <clears throat> On one side of that town, I heard wonderful songs sung by cowherd women and the charming sound of the churning of butter and the jingling of bangles. Trying to subdue my agitated joy, I walked forward and came across a seated elderly gentleman, sobbing profusely, incessantly chanting, Krishna, Krishna. With some skillful effort, I made him speak, and I heard him say in a choked voice that this town belonged to Nanda, the king of the cowards, Sri Krishna's father. As soon as I heard those words, I fainted, overcome with delight. After a moment, that compassionate old man revived me, and I ran ahead and approached a gateway of the town and sat there at that gate. And there I saw, by the hundreds of thousands and tens of millions, all sorts of wonders, unseen, unheard of, unimaginable by anyone of this world. I couldn't discern whether the people there were all enjoying the highest bliss or suffering in the grip of terrible misery. I heard the gopis' songs coupled with their crying. 
But were they songs of the greatest contentment or the greatest sorrow? I couldn't tell. A person seeing that place might think he was in the material world, but by carefully reflecting on whatever he had seen before, he would understand that he was now somewhere above all material planets, all higher planetary regions, and all the transcendental realms of the spiritual world. Then an elderly lady came by. I bowed down to her and asked in a plaintive voice where Sri Nandana was playing today. That elderly lady said, this morning that giver of life to us Brajabhasis went into the dense forest to play with his cows and friends and his respected elder brother. Later at dusk, he will return. All the Brajabhasis are waiting on this path along the Jamuna, their eyes transfixed on the road. These trees stand with leaves erect, eagerly awaiting the chance to see him. Surely he will come along this path. Gopakumar says, as if anointed by a downpour of the purest nectar, I gazed with one-pointed attention down the path the old lady had pointed out. The sheer force of my ecstasy had frozen my thighs, but with some effort I moved on, and I heard from afar a certain sound. Mixed with the mooing of cows, it was the supremely attractive murmur of Krishna's enchanting flute. That sound, sweet melodies of sportingly played notes, diverse with musical embellishments, was like nothing I had ever heard in the material world. Its attractive force at once overwhelmed everyone in the cowherd village. By the power of that sound, sap flowed in a downpour from the long rows of trees. A flood of tears fell from the eyes of every embodied being. In the village of the cowherds, a shower of milk rained from the breasts of all Krishna's mothers and even from the elderly women, and the rapid currents of the Jimuna suddenly stood still. I didn't know whether that flute gave out poison or the nectar of immortality, whether its sound was harsh like thunder or soft like water, hotter than blazing fire or cooler than the moon. I couldn't tell. But that sound drove all the Brajabhasis mad. All of them were utterly bewildered. Then I saw some women of Braj come out of their homes, bearing in their hands the things needed to greet Krishna with worship. Others who passed by held ornaments and offerings of food in their hands. Other ladies, ignoring everything around them, ran towards the mingled sounds of the mooing of the cows and the song of the flute. In the frenzy of love for Krishna, the ladies stumbled down the path. Some ladies ran their ornaments in disarray. Some could hardly keep their belts and hair tied. Some stayed in their homes, stunned like trees, and others fell unconscious on the ground. Some of the women who had fainted, their faces wet with tears and saliva, were carried forward by their girlfriends. The ladies, so diverse in complexion and adorned with diverse ornaments and dress, put to shame the good fortune of the goddess of fortune herself. Swiftly the ladies ran to the bank of the Jamuna, absorbed in singing his names and pastimes. I too went forward, as if pulled by someone. Joining the throng of gopis rushing forward on all sides, I too began to run quickly. Then from a distance, I saw him, his charming flute in hand. Running quickly, he emerged from amongst his friends and animals and approached me, saying in a sweet voice, Look, Sridham, here is my dear friend, Sarupa, the sun who shines on the lotus of your family. Now there, Sanatana Goswami writes in a purport to this verse. Because Krishna recognized Gopakumar as his friend, Sarupa, Krishna left behind the coward boys and the cows and ran forward to greet him. So sweet. So Gopakumar goes on. Krishna was dressed for the forest. His garments, earrings, and peacock feather crown all swayed to and fro, and so did his garland of kadamba flowers. His fragrance perfumed all directions, and his beautiful lotus face blossomed with a playful smile. His lotus eyes beamed with a merciful glance, and the varied assets of beauty decorated him in a singular way. 
The fingers of his lotus hand busily pushed back the locks of his hair, which flew about, adorned with the dust raised by the cows. His tender, divine lotus feet touched the surface of the earth just to grant her the gift of supreme splendor. Playfully dancing as they moved, they attracted everyone's heart with their great eagerness to walk quickly with large steps. The effulgence of his cloud-colored body, shining with the full sweetness of youth, lit up all corners of the sky. His beauty, which captured the hearts of the ever-dear devotees of Braja, was an ocean abounding with countless excellences. He leaped forward and came close to me, compelled by the affection of his helpless devotee. I fainted in love upon seeing him. He caught hold of me by the neck, and suddenly he too fell to the ground. A moment later, I reawoke and carefully freed my neck from his grasp. I stood up and saw him on the ground unconscious. Covered with dust, he was moistening the path with his tears. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> what we may expect, or what we can expect when we purify our hearts and awaken our love for Radha and Krishna. This is the ticket back home, back to Godhead. So again, that was a very long quote from Brihat Bhagavatam Ritam but absolutely necessary for us to hear and relish. For with all due respect, no other spiritual tradition reveals what to speak of explains just how one enters the kingdom of God, or we would say Goloka Vrindavan. But we are all fortunate, for we know who we are and we know where we're going. I've many times said that. <laughs> we know who we are and we know where we're going, especially by those beautiful verses by Srila Sanatana Goswami. It's no mystery. Everything's clear, absolute truth. So, today we're continuing with our mini-series entitled Stimulation for Ecstatic Love, and this will be part 48. In this lecture, we will discuss Krishna's um, Sudarsan Chakra. Today the lecture is about Krishna's Sudarsan Chakra. Now, I did some research. The scripture Amara Kosha 1129 says, Chakram Sudarsana, meaning the name of Bhagavan's chakra is Sudarsana. And the meaning of Sudarsana is Shu, mean Shobhanam or, or beautiful, and Darshana or sight. The Acharyas say, That chakra whose sight is beautiful to behold for the devotees. It's not beautiful to the demons. <laughs> that chakra whose sight is beautiful to behold for devotees is not beautiful to the demons. The Acharyas say like that. In a rare, unpublished tantra named Viha Geshvara Samhita, there's a text called Shudarshan Sahasranam Shtotram, the thousand names of the Sudarshan chakra. And within that Shastra, we find what is called the Dhyana Mantra of Shudarshan. This is very rare. With the help of some of my scholarly friends, we found the Dhyana Mantra of Shudarshan. It's as follows. <coughs> Holding a conch, disc, bow, axe, sword, arrow, spear, binding noose, gold, lotus, Glowing bhajra, shield, plow, mace, club, and jasmine in his 16 hands. He, Shudarshan, has extremely fierce teeth, spokes. His hairs are blazing, he has three eyes, his ornaments, garlands, etc. are all of the radiance of blazing fire. One should meditate on this personality named Shudarshan, who is situated in a hexagonal mandala and who takes on the role of a chakra that vanquishes the life heirs of all enemies of Vishnu. That vanquishes the life heirs of all enemies of Vishnu. <laughs> the mantra. I actually have the mantra in Sanskrit, but it was very complicated, so I want to speak of memorizing. I could hardly recite it. Now, in southern India, the appearance day of Shudarshan, 
in this universe is celebrated in the month of Ashada, on Shukla Paksha Dashami, the tenth day of the waxing of the moon. This year, we calculated it was on June 28, 2023. Now, after hearing all this, one might question, how can the Sudarshan Chakra, such a fierce personality, such a fierce weapon of uh, Lord Vishnu, actually, um, be uh, a stimulation for ecstatic love for Radha and Krishna? <laughs> but it is a fact that it is a stimulation for ecstatic love, and that we shall see. Just like we saw with the conch of Krishna, Panchajanya, in the last lecture. The Sudarshan Chakra actually plays a very intimate role in Brajalila. To begin with, we can remember how last week we quoted uh, Ananda Vrindavan Champu, chapter 15 by Kavikarnapura, which describes how Krishna was worshipped, you remember, during Govardhan Lila. Kavikarnapura writes, Govardhan, with the limbs of his own body, provided an elegant throne made uh, of smooth stones and jewels for Krishna. The demigod Varuna personally held a fine white umbrella over Krishna's head, which had a fringe of hanging pearls uh, that appeared like falling raindrops. Vayu, his arm trembling in ecstatic devotion, stood beside the Lord fanning him with a chamara whisk. The full moon assumed the form of a mirror made of jewels. And remember, Pancha Janya, the Lord's conch shell, sanctified the atmosphere with loud sounds. And, this is what I wanted to come to, the effulgent Sudarsan Chakra expanded as many lamps to illuminate all directions for the bathing ceremony. So this fierce Sudarsan Chakra appears in very intimate, loving pastimes um, of Radha and Krishna and Krishna and Balram and the Coward Boys in Braj. He's there. What's more, when Krishna was holding up Giriraj Govardhan to protect the inhabitants of Vrindavan from the torrents of rain sent by Lord Inda, Sudarsan Chakra appeared above Giriraj and by spinning around, deflected much of the rain pouring down on the mountain. And when it's described when Krishna saw that some of that flood water had begun to stream down and under the hill where the Brajabhasis were, he again called upon Sudarshan Chakra to help in another way. It's written that searing with the heat of 10 million suns, the Sudarshan Chakra then hovered around the base of Govardhan Hill and dried up the rain streaming down the hill, much like Augusta Muni had once dried up the ocean by drinking it. Much like Augusta Muni had once dried up the ocean by drinking it. Shastra. Now, after Krishna had put Giriraj Govardhan uh, back in place, the Sudarsan Chakra, again, who's generally associated with Lord Vishnu and his pastimes, approached Krishna and he requested that he be able to reside somewhere in the uh, Govardhan area. <laughs> the Acharyas say, it's really nice, Krishna felt greatly obliged to his eternal weapon and he also wanted Sudarsan Chakra to witness the spontaneous loving devotion of the Brajabhasis, much like he, he had wanted Uddhava, who's from Dwarka, to also stay for some time or come to Vrindavan to witness the love of the gopis. So Krishna wanted Sudarsan to witness what? The Braj Bhakti, the spontaneous loving devotion of the Brajabhasis. Wow. So the Lord gave him a place of bhajan, a place of residence uh, at Govardhan Hill. That place became known as Chakra Tirtha. Chakra Tirtha. The sacred Tirtha or the place of the Sudarsan Chakra. That's his place. <laughs> So this Chakra Tirtha is, um, well, it's directly under the very spot where Sudarshan spun above Govardhan Hill to protect the residents of Vrindavan from the downpour of rain. Now, interestingly, it's also a residence 
a prominent residence of Lord Shiva, who resides there in a group of five uh, Shiva Lingams, which were installed by the great grandson of Krishna, Brajanam. In this place, Lord Shiva is called Chakleshwara Mahadev, and he's one of the five prominent Shiva Lingams protecting Vrindavan Dham. Shiva is there to protect another pastime, but Shiva protects Vrindavan Dham. The other four are Gopeshwara in Vrindavan town, Kundeshwara in Radhakund, Bhutashwara in Mathura, Nandeshwara in uh, Nandagaon, and uh, Kameshwara in Kamyavan. Each of those places is a very ancient, beautiful Shiva Lingam. Now it's interesting to note here that our Shanatan Goswami, who's Brihat Bhagavatamrita we were reciting, he, he's intimately linked with Chakratirtha. Because during his life, 500 years ago, he often lived there. He had different places he would do his bhajan, but this, you could say, was one of his favorite places, Chakratirtha. He lived there, worshipping Radha and Krishna, as well as uh, the deity of Lord Shiva. In fact, wherever Sanatana Goswami took up residence in Vrindavan, I was reading, like Govardhan Hill, Kamyavan, Nandagram, etc., he would never be far away from the deity of Lord Shiva. <coughs> Actually, he would worship Shiva daily. The reason that Sanatana Goswami always lived near Lord Shiva in Braj, in his own words, is, Lord Shiva increases one's love for Lord Krishna. Another reason he liked to live near Lord Shiva is that the two great souls are actually closely related. Sanatana Goswami is said to be the combined form of Lavanga Manjari and Sanatana Kumara. Sanatana Kumara was born from Brahma's mind and is thus the brother of Shiva who was also born of Brahma. So they're brothers. <laughs> Sometimes when absorbed in his internal identity as Lavanga Manjari, Sanatana Goswami would meditate on how the gopis used to come to Chakratirtha, then known at that time as Paranga, the boat landing. And from that place he would daily circumambulate Govardhan Hill, along a much uh, longer outer Parikama path than, than, than we go. Uh, he'd start there from Chakratirtha and he'd go out a little bit beyond the route we take, further out, and it would take him a long time to go around Govardhan Hill because it's much longer. And it's said that he would perform 1,108 obeisances each time to Giri Raj every day. And once at the advanced age of 65, as Sanatana Goswami was performing Govardhan Parikama, I think it was in the heat of the summer, he was passing by Kusham Sharovra when he sat down to briefly rest. And at that time, Krishna famously appeared in the guise of a local cowherd boy and fanned Sanatana Goswami with his upper cloth. And that mysterious boy said to Sanatana, Baba, you're too old to be doing parikama every day. But Sanatana Goswami, he was thinking, this boy's fanning has the same soothing effect on my body that his voice has on my heart. Is he someone special? <laughs> and although Sanatana Goswami was practically exhausted, he tried to conceal his condition from the boy, explaining how he had taken a vow to perform Govardhan Parikama every day. So the coward boy just laughed, and then embracing Sanatan, he picked him up and put him on his shoulder and started to walk, saying, don't worry, Baba, then I will carry you. You've taken that vow, so I will carry you. And in an attempt to stop the boy, Sanatan said, please put me down. My vow is to walk around Govardhan Hill, not be carried around it. Besides, how is it that you're so strong? Who are you? <laughs> so Krishna was very pleased with Sanatana Goswami's determination, but he was also very concerned about his failing health because he was elderly. And with these two factors in mind, the Lord uh, provided a wonderful solution for his pure devotee. Krishna took Sanatana 
and led him closer to Govardhan Hill. There Krishna placed his foot on a large stone, a, a large shila, leaving an impression of his foot on that shila. So finally Sanatan understood who that cowherd boy was. And falling on the ground, he bathed Krishna's lotus feet with his tears and offered the Lord very beautiful prayers. Then Krishna said, Sanatan, take this stone and worship it daily with tosi leaves and water, then walk around it seven times. This will be equivalent to circling the entire hill. And with that, Krishna disappeared. So Sanatan Goswami then took that large shila, this Giriya shila, back to his beloved place of bhajan, Chakratirtha, or the Sudrasan Chakra. It spun above, above Govardhan Hill to protect from the downpour of rain, and then went down to the base of Govardhan Hill and dried up all the water. Very intimate <laughs> part of Krishna's leela. And Sanatan Goswami um, would worship that shila every day for the rest of his life. He personally served that shila exactly as the Lord instructed. And interestingly enough, that was the place where uh, Srila Sanatana Goswami left this world. Very special place. So we must all go to Chakratirtha. It's on the banks of Manasi Ganga, um, halfway down Govardhan Hill. And I hope you're more inspired to go there. So of course, We've only just begun to describe the glories of Krishna's discus, his Sudarsan Chakra, and we'll continue next week. And I'd like to finish today with a beautiful poem by Surdas, that great Bajbasi poet. It's in the same mood as um, Sudarsan Chakra giving protection to the Bajabasis when Indra tried to drown them. The poet Surdas says, O writer of Garuda, the holder of the Sudarsan Chakra, the son of Maharaj Nanda, please remove all my troubles. You are the one who freed the Yamala Arjun trees. You were the protector of the elephant Gajendra and the dancer on the head of the Kaliya serpent. Please protect me everywhere. O lifter of Govardhan Hill, the pride crusher of Inda, the protector of Braj, please think mercifully about the abandoned. You didn't delay after hearing the cry of Draupadi. Why are you delaying in giving your mercy to Surdas, who is a servant of you, life after life? Hare Krishna. Surdas, thank you so much. Thank you to Srila Prabhupada for revealing all this knowledge to us. Thank you to Srila Shanatan Goswami for writing Brihat Bhagavata Mita. And all glories to the Sudarsan Chakra, the disc of Lord Vishnu, which appears again and again in Braj Leela, which We'll explain more next Friday. I don't know, maybe we'll get two more classes from Sudar Sanchaka. Oh, thank you, Prabhu. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radhasham Shundar Ki, Brindapadeshwari, Shimati Radharani Ki, Mayapur Dham Ki, Gorni Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Nitai Gaur Pemanandi, JJ Sisirad Hey.